This is Coffee with Kerry. Each week we meet amazing people who are going to be challenged to step from behind their profession for a game show and interview whilst having lots of fun. If you're looking to inject more fun into your world, join us here every week. It's time to get on with the show. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Kerry. Super excited to be here and another brave soul has stepped forward to come through the rounds of the show. So super excited and have to introduce today's guest. We have today the amazing Chuck Taylor and talk about being gifted with a famous guest the number one Texas radio host by AM in his day and then educator in the PM of his day and podcaster in his spare time. Chuck's podcasts include, and there's a list here, so, yep, (laughs) All-Star Mornings and then the official Texas Countdown and the most recent and awesome Red Dirt America. So Chuck has so many other achievements that he may share with us today on the show. Chuck, it's great to have you here. Welcome aboard. I am so happy to be here, Carrie. I have wanted to be on this show forever. It's the most fun show. I've listened to every single episode. I have not missed a single one. You are a fantastic host. Oh, Chuck, you're too kind. You're too kind. Overstated. Absolutely overstated. I just love the fun. I come for the fun, I hope the guest has fun, and I hope anyone tuning in has fun. So that's what it's all about. And thank you. Thank you for being such a a great supporter of the show. I really appreciate it. And it's great to have you here, finally. Yes. It's great to be here. Yay. (laughs) And and Chuck, I just just want to point something out here before we step into the first round. You've dressed up for the occasion. What you got going on here, buddy? It's it's, it's the holidays, right? So we have to have Santa cats going on. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I do have uh, LED lighting going on here as well. Little twinkles. Yes. There you go. See it. Oh, that's Lots great. Lots of fun, right? It's yep. having fun. It is. It is. Chuck, thank you for going to that effort. I love the Santa Cats. They are fantastic. And yeah, I expect to see you walking the streets of Texas in this, um, you know, over the holiday period. Hmm? With my cowboy hat or my trucker hat on. Yep. Yep. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Chuck, we're going to step into the first round. Are you ready? I am ready. Chuck, the first round is the mug shot. You were asked as part of the booking process to bring a mug for today's show. Do you have your mug, Chuck? I have my mug. Mm -hmm. And this is very special to me. I don't know if you can see this. I can. My daughter was uh, four or five when she made this for me for Father's Day. She drew the picture and had it put on the mug. So this is my most favorite and most cherished mug that I keep with me at work at all times. I always have it with me. I love it. And it happens to be another cat. Of course. Another cat. (laughs) What did you expect? Of course. What should I expect exactly? I love that. That's so cute. And I can't isn't it great that we can bring these things to actual physical things, you know, like a picture from a piece of paper is now on a mug and cherished by you. I just think that's amazing. That is so good. Absolutely. And I mean, it looks, it still looks new and she's 19 now. So, I mean, Ooh. I've had this for a long, long time. Mm, definitely. Oh, cheers to that. Love it. Awesome. Chuck, I brought a mug to today's episode and I couldn't help but purchase this one and I thought it was a little bit appropriate for you and I getting together on the show. I have my Roadcaster Pro mug. Oh, that's awesome. It is very, very nice. A bit smaller than I expected when I purchased it. I confess it arrived and I'm like, oh, that's a bit tiny. So I don't know if I'll use this one. But what I do like about it on the back, it says, everyone's a podcaster which I thought was That's pretty, awesome. pretty good by Roadcaster Pro. That's a pretty good mug for the collection. So, Chuck, shall we do a cheers to the screen with our mugs? Absolutely. Let's do this. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Chuck. That's so good. I'm glad you've got your favorite mug. That's what it's all about. Fantastic. Chuck, we're going to move into the next round already. 
I know it's like a boxing match, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> right. Agreed. Agreed. Ding ding. Duck. Duck and cover. Mm-hmm. 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 Hands up, protecting yourself at all times. You just never know what's coming. Well, so, with you, I've seen the episodes with Sid. I know to protect myself. Now, let, let's just touch on this for a second. I think Sid's <laughs> out there talking a bit of smack about this show. And I'll say this out loud because I've said it to him, you know, out loud as well. I don't trick anyone. I just tricked him because it was too much. It was He's an easy target, you know. he needed. He's an easy he, mark. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Anyway. Let's step into the next round, which happens to be five fun facts about you. So to get Mm. that, we do need to refer to the numbers board behind me that has numbers 1 to 20. So Chuck, I need you to pick five numbers off the board between 1 and 20 that will reveal the five fun facts about you. All right. So let's do one. Let's do five. Let's do seven, nine, and 14. Looking good. We've got five numbers, always good. And I'm just going to point out some colors here because you've almost got like a bit of an Aussie theme. Yellow and green is Aussie, like Aussie, 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 and the blue <laughs> for good measure. So very good. Chuck, question number one you have selected is, who would you most like to meet? Wow, that's, mm. that's a tough one. Who would I most like to meet? Um, wow. Uh, you know, if, if I thought about everybody in the entire world, is this living or dead or can it be? Either either. Either either. <laughs> then it would have to be, uh, Albert Einstein, probably the, the smartest man ever in the entire world. And I would love to just have a moment to sit down and have a cup of coffee with him and have a conversation. That's a good choice. Oh, I like that. Oh, you've thought about this before, perhaps. Mm. Maybe. Something at the dinner table, <laughs> maybe? Mm-hmm. maybe. Have you been here before? Fantasy. Have you been on the show before? I have not, but there's a song called Fantasy Dinner, and it makes you think about who you like to have a fantasy dinner with. Ah, that's it. That's the trick. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Chuck, question number five is, what food gets you the most excited when you realize you haven't had it in a while? Brisket. Oh. Brisket, brisket, brisket. Oh, I've heard so many good things about American brisket. Please, please just indulge me for a moment. So, so the thing about brisket, it's, it's not just the taste, it's the smell, it's the cooking process, it's, it's everything about it, right? And mm. it is just the perfect food. You, you take this big slab of meat and you, you put it with salt and pepper, very simple ingredients it with salt and pepper. You put it on a, a smoker. You do it low and slow for 14 hours. And then there's that anticipation building up, that smell building up, right? And then you grab it. You have it, the cut piece and it pulls apart and falls apart in your hand and it's juicy and tender. And I'm making myself hungry already talking mm-hmm. about it. Yep. I've not had my breakfast, Chuck. I don't know if this is a good way to, to kick off the recording, but I will say How does something still be so awesome after 14 hours? Shouldn't it be absolutely like cactus, absolutely dead? 14 Mm. hours. Because you're doing it low and slow, right? You're smoking Uh. over indirect heat, right? You're you're cooking at about 225 degrees for the first 10 hours or so. Then you wrap it in uh, either aluminum foil or butcher paper and and finish it out. And it's Mm. so tender and so moist and so, and even the burnt ends are so delicious. I've heard about the burnt ends. I've heard about them. Oh, someone, yeah, yeah, that was on the show. Oh, my God. Yep. Okay. So Kerry really just needs to either get on board with this and bring it to Australia and make it happen. Yes. Or. I'll send you a recipe. Yeah. Or, you know, when the time's right, get on a plane and come and visit. Kerry on a plane? I know. I know. Uh, That's scary. Uh, I know it's going to happen one day for sure. For sure. I think, um, I think I've referred to it, you know, 2025, 2032, it'll happen. It'll happen at some point, but I would love that recipe because I think I need to, you know, look at 
adopting this earlier. Oh yeah. Mm. Maybe maybe you can do kangaroo brisket. Oh now you might be pushing it, Chuck. I think that's just stepping <laughs> a little bit too far. Only because too far. Can, yeah, just that kangaroo much? kangaroo meat's a little bit too gamey. Like it's just, you know, okay. it's just got got a different kind of tang to it. So definitely the beef brisket sounds like the way to go. So yeah. All right. Love it. All right. Next question, Chuck, is question number seven. What's your favorite thing to tune into in the car? In the car would have to be coffee with. No. Oh. No. Oh. Nah. Seriously. I, I put it on my phone. I've got a 45 minute commute. Most of your episodes are around that length. And it's mm-hmm. the thing to listen to. Oh. It's fun. It gets me in a good mood and I get to work happy and energized and ready to go. Oh, Even see, doing a little need- dance. Yeah, see, we need to do daily, you know, Monday to Friday coffee with Kerry's just to fill cup, fill Chuck's cup. That's the per- that's that's where we need to go. Maybe I can put that on the list for twenty twenty two. Producer, producer, <laughs> let me tell, let me tell the producer. <laughs> wow, I'd be daily, happy with that. Daily shows. Oh, that's a that's a big big one to. Oh, I don't know, Chuck. I don't I don't know if I can do it. I, oh. It's tough. It's tough, but it can be done. I do a I do a four hour daily show every day. You do, and see, this is less than an hour. Why am I complaining? This is this should be easy, right? Yeah, easy as mm-hmm. chocolate mm-hmm. pie with little yep. sprinkles on top. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Let's move away from the food. <laughs> <laughs> we'll step into the next question, which is number nine. And I think I know the answer to this question, but but for anyone tuning in, please tell us, Chuck, your level of DIY tech skills. Would you rate yourself out of one to 10, 10 being the highest? I would give myself an eight and a half to a nine. I'm, I'm one of these guys who can, who can watch anything on YouTube and I can do it. I, I build things with raspberry pies. I've, I've put together my own setup. So yeah, I, I, I'm real high on that score. Mm-hmm. And Chuck, just to disclose to anyone that may not know that you've got like an emergency backpack full of gear just in case for the oh, radio yeah. show. Yeah. Actually, this camera, laptop, and this microphone are all <laughs> normally in that backpack. I'm uh-huh. using it right now. There you go. There you go. So for anyone in the States tuning into the Texas radio networks, you know that if you're on Chuck's station, if he gets stuck on the freeway, sorry, highway, whatever you call it, he'll still be there. He'll he'll pull over, Absolutely. he'll pull out the kit, he'll wire it all up, and you'll be good to go. Huh? Broadcasting from my phone even. Yeah, exactly. Look Got it, all mate. this into the phone. So going back to that number, Chuck, I would give you like a 9.9 out of 10, if not a 10. Because I think mm. you can do anything when it comes to tech. Oh, I think there's a few things I can't do. So that's why that's why I lower myself a little bit. I know what I can and can't do. Yeah, yeah. But, that's but good. thank you for the compliment. Thank you for the no. compliment. I'll just take the compliment. That's it. That's it. You're very welcome. All right. The final question is number 14, Chuck. And it is, what's the best holiday you've ever had? If you've, if you've had a good holiday. I would say um, several years back, we went with my in-laws to Disney World for Christmas, and we we saw all the lights at Disney World. We took my daughter there, and that was probably the best one. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of vacations in the last 10 years, but that was probably the m- most fun vacation because it was Disney mm-hmm. World. It was Florida. It wasn't that cold, but it was Christmas time, the holidays, and the lights. It was perfect. Ooh, Disney over Christmas. That sounds magical. Magical. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, boys. <laughs> and a little bit of Mickey there on the side. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Chuck, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for playing five fun facts about you. That was pretty easy. Thank you for asking. You're very welcome. We're going to step into something a little bit more tricky. The next round is Survivor Challenge Coffee with Kerry. All right. I'm going to knock you off your perch here. All right. So Survivor Challenge is you need to choose three companions. They need Mm -hmm. to be celebrities by name or by character. You've been 
dumped on this, you know, deserted island. You have no supplies. You'll be there forever. So I need three names of celebrities that you're going to be stranded with so that you can survive. Okay. First one. Oh, okay. Morgan Freeman. (gasps) What? Good choice. Yep. Morgan Freeman will narrate every day of our life on the island. Oh, I like that. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Number two. Mm-hmm. Can I have a little thinking music for number two? I think you should. Have that? I, I, yep, absolutely. Let's cue the thinking music. All right, I got it. Good stuff. And for anyone tuning in, Chuck knows the show and knows there's thinking music available. Take it away, Chuck. The whoever at the time that I'm dumped on the island, the current president of the United States, and here's why. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm because uh, I'm not going to name wh- whoever the president is. I'm saying whatever time I get dumped on the island, who's ever president at that particular time, because mm-hmm. the Secret Service will come looking for him. Oh, oh, oh! Smart, smart. Right? Wow! Right? <gasps> How has no one else come up with this? I get rescued. Even though I can never leave the island, I get rescued right there with guy number two. Love it. Love it. Good strategy, Chuck. Yep. And the last one is Willie Nelson. Ah, Willie. Of course. Like that. Yeah. Mm. He can sing to us. He can tell us stories. He can, you know... I think the wisest people listen to their elders, right? And he can mm. divine his wisdom that he's had over his 80 plus years. Mm. Oh, wow. Is he in his 80s? Really? He's in his 80s and still putting out albums. I would love to learn how somebody that old can be that young and that energized at the same time. Oh, we need some of that sauce too. Oh, my God. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Now, now, Chuck, with this, you know, obviously the challenge is bringing three people. We've got, you know, the mystery president because that that might change. You know, I'm 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 going to accept that every four years. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. How is Morgan and Willie going to get along? What What do you think they're going to be like together? Well, I think they enjoy the same herbs, so I think they'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. I follow. Mm-hmm. I follow. Yep. Big enough. Put your yeah. button down. So yeah. who who's going to build the shelter? Oh, that's me. I'm the DIY guy. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Of course. Tech skills into handyman right? skills. hundred percent. Got it. Got it. My grandfather taught me how to build a room when I was just 18 years old and ah. he taught me carpentry. So th- not a problem. Done. Done deal. Who's going to be the, the cook? Well, actually, who's going to go on? You? Okay. Me. Okay. They can they can just sit back and do their stuff. I'll take care of everything else. Wow. Chuck, you've got it all worked out. You're going to be busy. Yeah, but I'm going to have fun because I'm going to have Morgan Freeman narrating everything I do, right? Mm-hmm. You know, hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. Chuck poured a, a coffee. <laughs> now he lit a fire. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh my God, you've got it all worked out. You you might have been prepared for this. I think you've you've done a little bit of you know thinking behind the scenes to to bring the. I've got to say these are some of the best answers I've had on the show. This is good. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> for anyone listening, just you know this this is it now. Like this is the highest benchmark you're going to see on survival. Coffee with Kerry because it's just that's that is it that is it all done wrapped up in a box with a bow for Christmas all done and dusted okay thanks Stick for coming a fork everyone in it it's done <laughs> yay fantastic fantastic stuff Ooh, hang on a second late breaking moves oh Chuck we've had something come in from an unknown source Uh-oh. oh oh. Sp- Speaking of American presidents, little birdie here tells me that you've shaken the hands of three of them. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, please tell. Please tell. When I was a uh, kid uh, and, and we were growing up, I was in Arizona. We were living in, I believe it was Tubac or Tumacacri. Uh, both For President Ford and uh, new president Jimmy Carter had the area. And I lined up along a fence, stuck my hand out, and I've had both of those guys shake my hands. Later, mm. when I was in junior high, um, I belonged to a uh, thing called Upward Bound, which was gifted and talented students. And we went and we studied college stuff while we were still in high school in junior high. And we went on a field trip to the capital of Arkansas. And the governor at that time was Bill Clinton. And I got to shake his hand. Well, so I've shaken the hands of three American presidents. Oh, that's Fantastic. So Ford, Carter, and Clinton. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Carter and Clinton. Wow, that's fantastic. How did that feel, Chuck? I've never, I've never had such an experience myself. What was that like? Well, when I was when I was a kid, I mean, it was kind of exciting because you see, you know, in this field, these these big old army helicopters come down, and of course, all these guys in, in their dark suits and you know, and their dark sunglasses and everything, and they're escorting these. And we're getting to exactly, exactly those sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And the school, we're just, we're just getting to line up along the fence. And I just happened to stick my hand out and, and, and they shook it, you know. I, I don't think I thought of anything about it at that time. But, you know, as time went by, it's a memory that I, I cherish. Uh, mm -hmm. With Bill Clinton, time, he was just governor of, the, of Arkansas. I had no idea that he would ever run for president. Mm. So I shook it before he became president, but no, it was, it was an honor uh, to be able to do that. You know, we were, we were gifted and talented students. So we were high IQ students studying and, and we got to do a trip like that, which is rare. Most of the other mm. students weren't doing that kind of thing. And to be able to do it, it, it was just an honor. Yeah, I bet. Oh, my goodness. I can imagine, like, for here in Australia, it would be like, you know, no offence, but our Prime Minister is probably not as big a deal as, like, the President of the United States. It'd be like meeting the Queen, you know, because she's right. been been here quite a few times. I know many people that have, you know, actually shook her hand and had a conversation or an interaction or something. So I, I could I put it put it in a similar stature to that. So that's pretty incredible stuff. I, I like it a lot. Good story. Story. Huh. Thank you. We are going to step into the next round. Then, yeah, yeah, get ready, get ready. Chuck, the, ready. Next, the next round, I want to step over to the Wheel of Reveal. Now, the wheel has moved. You might have noticed that it used to be, it's, well, actually, you, you probably tune into the audio more so than the YouTube because for anyone tuning in on audio, this is available on YouTube, very visual kind of show. But the wheel's normally over there, right there, and I've popped it over here. I'm not convinced. I'm not happy with it at this stage. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it's going to shift again in 2022. But, Chuck, you can't reach it because it's all the way back there. So I'm going to go and spin the wheel for you. It's can can I just try? Boom. Yep. Oh, nearly, <laughs> nearly. Just missed it. Just missed it by that much. Let me let me do it for you. I will spin the okay. wheel. It's going to land on a word, and that's going to give us the revealing kind of next segment of the show. Oh boy. Big spin or little spin? Um, medium spin. Medium. Medium spin. Okay, landed on the what word. Yep, collector. Collector. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it makes sense. The question is, Chuck, are you a collector? Do you collect things? Do you have a little stash? I do. I what? do. I collect okay. a couple things. I collect guitars. Oh. Um, I collect microphones. Oh. And you might notice right behind me, I collect comic and pop art. Ooh, I like that. I see Batman. And Aquaman, right? 
Right. Yep. Shazam. Mm -hmm. um, Hot girl. Super girl. Mm -hmm. And on mm -hmm. up. Oh. Okay. So let's start with the guitars. That sounds expensive. That actually, like, you know, I, I, I know the price range of a guitar. What, why, what, like you're in the music space, you know, the Red Dirt America and the radio station and all the things. You're in Texas, like, let's be honest. But why? Well, guitars, um, the ones I have gotten, every guitar I have been given to me. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't had to purchase it, so they're not expensive. But I usually use them for autographs. Um, if you'll indulge me to lean over real quick, I'll grab yeah, one and show it. it to you. Yeah, please. Ooh, that's fancy. This guitar oh, has got autographs. All over it. Wow. Wow. Chuck. Every inch of this guitar. That's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. How many do you think are on there? Do you know? Uh, on that particular guitar, I think there are about 275 autographs. Really? Whoa. Including uh, Steve Earle, um, Ray Wiley Hubbard, Pat Green, um, Rodney Crowell, Chris Stapleton. Many, many huh. other folks that have signed this guitar. Wow. And for anyone tuning in, for Kerry, that is complete names right over the top of my head because <laughs> I've just got no idea. But that's a lot and it sounds super, super special. So that's incredible. And that sounds like a journey of collecting them, you know, meeting and greeting and shaking more hands and all that kind of stuff. How exciting. Oh, my God. What a I've treasure. Had I've had this guitar for 15 years, and so I've, I've had it signed over the last 15 years by people. Mm, wow, that's incredible. So, Chuck, let's step into the microphones. Tell us about the microphones. They'll feel like there's an addiction here. Yes. There's, and do not tell my wife she's not allowed to watch this episode. Okay. Okay. So I have got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14 microphones right now. 14? 14 <gasps> microphones right now. Uh, I, oh I love God. microphones. I've got everything from a Shure SM55, uh, which is mm -hmm. the Elvis looking microphone, to mm -hmm. this one. And it may make a little noise when I move it. Um, yeah. This one is really. I like that one. That looks fancy. It's very classic looking. I love classic mm -hmm. Art Deco design of microphones. So mm -hmm. different microphones do different things. I have shotgun microphones. I have uh, dynamic microphones, handheld microphones, condenser microphones. You, you want to do different things with your voice. So I have a different microphone for different needs. Mm. And this one sounds good. Chuck as well. Not only does it look good, but it sounds good. So that's impressive too, because sometimes the fancy ones, they look the part, but they don't perform, right? right? And, and they don't have to be expensive. You know, this one was, I think, $75. It's not that expensive oh. of a mic. Uh, it's, it's not a name brand. It's not an old, old mic, uh, but it looks like one that costs thousands of dollars, but it doesn't. Mm, I like my that. wife would like kill that. me if I spent thousands of dollars on a microphone. Well, well, let's be and honest, she, she doesn't know there's 14. Yeah, yeah, no, she, she doesn't, doesn't know that. We no, won't tell doesn't. her. So, you know, I might even speak to the producer about cutting that part out so that nobody knows. <laughs> <when he's> gonna... <laughs> Shh. Shh. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. I won't. It's a secret. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. 14. Don't tell anyone. Chuck, what was the last thing I've gotten so engrossed in the uh, guitar and the oh, microphone? that oh. It was the comic and pop art. I've been collecting comics right. since I was about five years old. Uh, mm -hmm. It came from my grandparents used to give me, uh, have me do chores, and they'd give me like 25 cents, and I'd run down to the 7-Eleven. And at that time, comics were still just 25 cents. And then as they went wow. up, they, they increased the allowance. But I've been collecting comics for years. I used four comics 
my sophomore year of college, I sold four comics and paid for the entire year of college. Whoa, really? That's intense. Really? Wow. Yeah. Huh. They were, they were, they were rare collectibles. And so I sold them and needed money for college. So they were worth more. <laughs> the education was worth more than the comics to me. Yeah, I bet. Wow. That's fantastic. Oh, and, and that's a really good like element in itself to go through that journey of having something. You probably, was there a little bit of sadness parting with them at the time? A little bit, but I had extra copies of the same one. Oh, I, 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 on the ones that I thought would go up in price, I'd always buy at least two copies. Mm, mm. Oh, I need to get you together with my husband because he's a, he's a bit of a collector of you know, different things and not so much maybe the comics, but he's got things like football cards and I think he's got mm. old baseball cards. Like, And same thing, he'll have two or three of the same card, you know, with kind of this, you know, prediction of what's going to kind of come in the future and what it's going to be worth. Yeah. He's got a oh, oh, crazy, crazy collection. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I, I see like coffee cups behind you, so other people collect things. Well, Yes, and it might have been disclosed on another show that he thought it was for the show. Mm -hmm. I, I love coffee. There's no secret about that. So, of course, I love coffee cups. And then the show gave me the purpose to have the collection. <laughs> Don't tell him. It's perfect. <laughs> I actually heard on one of your episodes that you used to be a coffee barista. Mm. Oh, many, many, many moons ago, I had a cafe and I would make you know, back then coffee wasn't trendy. This was pre-coffee trendy days, but um, definitely a, a morning staple. So very busy at the coffee machine in the cafe, making everyone's coffees in the morning. Loved it. Loved it. Can, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. What is the perfect coffee? Describe your perfect cup of coffee for me. Oh, these days that's really tough because I'm starting to kind of branch out in my coffee endeavours. Um, I have always been a latte girl, so it's, you know, the the shot of espresso plus the layer of milk with that, you know, lovely kind of foam on top. But these days I'm heading down this affogato trail and it's getting pretty wild. Like I started with the vanilla ice cream, the shot of espresso. Didn't quite do it for me. It was too sweet. Like the vanilla ice cream, just, you know, then hubby came up with this really clever idea of we've got coffee ice cream in the freezer. How about you put the coffee ice cream with the shot of espresso? Ooh. Whoa. Oh, mate, got to really? tell you. Oh, oh, it is to die for. Like really, because the coffee ice cream isn't as sweet as vanilla. So it's got that like right. bitterness to it. And then when you add the shot of espresso, but Kerry has to just, you know, kind of turn these things up a little bit, I put just a shot of milk as well. So it's got hmm. the coffee ice cream, the shot of espresso, large shot of espresso, and then just a quick layer of milk. Ooh. Oh, I could, I could just, I, if I was on the island, if I was deserted and I had to pick something like staple-wise, that would be it, affogato all the way incredible. I have not had one, but now I want one. Uh -huh. Just but the way you any, described it, I want one. Oh, and for anyone listening, like you need the tall glass, like it's not a little cup, it's a tall glass and you want at least probably two, two and a half, three scoops of that coffee ice cream, hit the shot mm. on the machine, whatever kind of machine you got, even if it's just the little capsules, you know, get that shot in there and then that shot of milk, stir it up. And I tell you now, I have it at about 9 p.m. at night. Whoop, am I awake? Like, bam, yeah. instant instant recovery. Yes, love it. Then you can get on Clubhouse and stay up. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what's yeah. happening. Yeah, that's what's happening. So Wednesday to Friday, that's definitely affogato time. I try to avoid it on the other days when I need to, you know, go to sleep, actually sleep. But, um, yeah, later in the week, it keeps me going, keeps me fired. <laughs> I'm going to have one of those this weekend. I'm going to make one this weekend. You oh, just inspired do. me. And, and let me know how it goes, Chuck. I'm dying to know other people need to explore this coffee landscape and suss out this option because it's the best, the best. Oh, so good. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that because I, I had never heard of it before. 
You're very welcome. My pleasure. That's what I'm here for. Not only the fun, but the coffee. So it's all all about those two wrapped <laughs> up together. So yeah, for sure. Chuck, we, we've come to the end of the show. What what, oh. what what just happened? What what's going on? What have what have I forgotten? I did the board. I did the wheel. <sighs> did the wheel. Did oh. the board. Did, did the survivor did. challenge. Yeah, yeah. I did that. That's it. Oh man, that's sad. I don't like the end. I, I, I really, oh. it's, it's not fun. The fun stops. It's like, what? You know, but I do enjoy, you know, everything we get from the show and then, you know, hubby puts it through the whole production and we get all the clips and we share that across all the social platforms and onto YouTube. So the fun continues. Let me say that. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, can I say thank you for having me? I have oh. been since the beginning, since a fan of yours since the beginning, since I've started listening to it, since I met you on Clubhouse, I've been a total fan, uh, a total fanboy over you. And, uh, and I just am so honored that you decided to have me on. Oh, Chuck, thank you. Thank you for giving your time and being here. I appreciate that so much. I'm glad we finally made it happen. And, and we found that gap in our schedules to pull it together. And I just appreciate you being such a great supporter, uh, first and foremost, and then being a guest. That's the best. Thank you. Thank you. Chuck, I'm going to play us out and we get to do another little dance. So thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to Coffee with Kerry. You can catch us weekly and I'd love to receive your rating or personal review. See you next week.